Okay, in this video we are going to adjust the attack down animation and we are also going to make sure that our fireball spawns from, from his staff. So right now when I attack down, he taps a little to the right uh, before we only fix the left and uh, right attacks. Um, the up one is fine, but when we attack down, as I said, he will jump a little to the right. So we need to adjust that. And besides that, you can see the fireball spawns from his nose, kinda. In like in the middle of the sprite and I would like it to spawn from the staff so we also need to do something about that and um, let's see if we go to the sprites folder and go to the player and attack adjusted we need to select all attack down and then we need to set the uh, what's it called pivot to custom and set this one to 54 and apply and that should be enough for adjusting it if you haven't done it by yourself already so now you can see he doesn't jump to the left. Maybe he does a little. Nah, he doesn't really. You can always keep adjusting it. So the main part of this video is to make sure we can shoot from our staff. So to do that, we need some points in our game world um, to figure out where to shoot from. So let's see here. If I would take my player, and you can see this is his standard sprite, I can actually add the correct sprites to figure out what I need to, uh, where I need to shoot from. So let's start with adjusting the down animation, or the down attack for that matter. If we select our player and take attack down 16 and drag it in here, you'll see that the staff has this position. So we can actually select our player, click create and create empty. Put it under the player, we could also say create empty child though. This is an exit point, so let's say exit down, this is our down exit. And actually, I would like to create a new um, create empty child and call this one exits and then put exit down under that. When you have exit down, you can select the tool to the almost far left, this move tool, and move it right on top of the staff, like in the center of the staff, like this. And just place it like right in the center, like I'm doing here. This is what we have to do for all directions. So this was the down one. So if I find attack left, for example, I can select my player and take attack left and add it as the sprite. And then I'll see, hey, I need to place something there. So I can select exit down, duplicate it and rename it to exit left. And maybe with proper, proper letters like so. And then move it, uh, move the exit left to the center of the staff like so and then I'm going to duplicate this and call it exit uh, right and then I'll take the attack right animation take the last one and put it as sprite so I can see where it needs to go select exit right and move it all the way to the center and the last one I need is exit up like so and then I simply select exit up here like that and select exit up under the hierarchy and move it to the center of the staff so now I have all the directions and then I can put my player back let's just take I don't know it doesn't really matter what animation he has as the standard so let's do like that so all these are just points that we can use to exit our uh, spells so next thing we have to do is to write a script. So let's go to our scripts and actually we can just use the player script because he's already attacking from there. So we need to change a little something inside the script so we can use the new exit points. So let's just put this on the screen so we can see something and zoom in. And then I'll create a new transform array and call it exit points. So these are the points that I can use for exiting with my spells. So right now, I have created a serialized field called exit points with transforms. So now I can go to my player, select it, and then I can open up my exit points and say I have four of them. And with that done, I can take every single one. Um, doesn't really matter what the order is. Let's just take from up right, um, left in the bottom, and down, so that I I will follow, um, what's it called, I'll follow 
the um, the the clock right clockwise. So up, right, down, and then lift like it's a clock. So with that done, I can jump back to the script and use these points. First of all, I need to access the correct point. So let's just make a let me make a variable here called uh, exit index. So this index is going to make sure that we use the right uh, direction. So that remember when I press up or W, I want it to be the first one because if I look here, the exit up has element zero. So I need to set my exit point to element zero. So exit index equals zero. And if I press A, that's left. That's the last one. So exit index equals three. Remember it's zero indexed. So the largest value is three and the lowest one is zero. S is down, so that's number two. Let's see here, exit index equals two. And the last one, D is exit index equals two, one. So, so now I'm changing my index every time I press one of my buttons. So I need to use this index and this exit point uh, transform uh, array to play to uh, instantiate my attacks. Right now I'm just using the spell prefab and my own position. So instead of this position, I will actually have to use my exit points with the exit index in it. Like so dot. Uh, position. So if I save this, I should have my fireball spawn directly from his um, um, his, his attack here. Um, but there might be a mistake actually, because when I right right when I start the game, uh, I'm facing down, and down is number element number two, and from the get go it's zero, so it's going to have the wrong element from the get go. So let's just set this one to to when we start exit index equals two just from when we instantiate it like that so let's try now attack it spawns on my staff here right there right there and right there as you can see so now it looks a little better I think when it comes out of his actual staff here okay so I am aware of the fact that he can attack the skeleton no matter what direction he's facing so if i would stand up here with my back turned towards him i'll still be able to attack him so in the next video we will add some line of sight to the player so that he can't attack the skeleton if he's not facing it um so the, so that it looks more realistic in, in that way so thanks for watching thanks for watching my video Please remember that InScope Studios is a community founded page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.